I don't know if it's the fact that we haven't had My Hero Academia in a couple weeks and it softened me up. Maybe it's the visual cuteness and details brought into this chapter that Horikoshi has shown that they are able to do in given time, or perhaps the thought provoking discussions on the tenacity of Deku and the way that quirks interact with each other. But I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed. Yo everybody, it's your boy King of Chaos here to bring you My Hero Academia chapter 414. Uh, we are really about to wrap up this story and things are looking bright for us. If you love My Hero Academia, be sure to drop a like and let me know in the comment section what you think of this review. It really means a lot to me and costs absolutely nothing and encourages me to drop more. We open it up with One For All's uh, internal monologuing about how do you use Blackwood this way? What, what is Deku even doing? The way that he's been able to metabolize and utilize these quirks are just routes that no one has seen before. He is utilizing Black Whip, encasing it around and throughout his body as a way to move. He looks like Spider-Man at this point. And then you have Kudo-kun saying straight up, hey, look, this is what happens. He doesn't just follow orders. Each and every time, he finds a way to utilize the quirks to their maximum abilities because he admires each and every one of them. That's what's gonna make him the hero. And that's what makes One For All shine so much brighter. So they're really giving my man his credit. And I gotta say, as knowing as I think Deku is, as much as I think it's ruined, uh, that they took the ability to make him just like an underdog and gave him nine different quirks, kind of don't like that. That being said, I do appreciate the fact that Deku has kept his brains about it. He does have a high IQ when it comes to utilizing these quirks and just goes to show all the years he spent without them really did sharpen his senses and at least his instincts on how to maneuver in a battlefield. Huge shout out to him. Deku's now internal monologue saying that he needs to worry about and match Shigaraki's speed without getting touched by Decay and also without using Gear Shift's help because he can't utilize it anymore. And he also then needs to transfer the second's Gear Shift to him. He says he has no choice but to bet on it, <laughs> which is useful because he's referring to the ability to outsmart um, his danger sense. We then get some knowledge on how the transferring of One For All works. Um, and it's stated, and I quote, for One For All to get transferred, the user has to willingly give someone their DNA. Pause, hold up, what? Anyways, really doesn't matter how much as long as you get my DNA. Oh my God, because <laughs> Deku's remembering All Might saying this to him. One For All can only transfer if the its holder wills it to. It can't be given to an unwilling participant. So you gotta give it to DNA and it has to be given to an unwilling participant and, you, and it has to be consensual on both ends. That's interesting. Kudo says that he and Bruce theorized this and even tested it. How nostalgic that they are all bound to the mission even after death. Love that. Now Deku states that Shigaraki keeps healing himself, so it's gonna be very difficult to actually get his blood inside of him, you know? Good thing for him is Shigaraki does want the quirk, regardless of his reasoning why, or at least Deku believes he does. Um, and he says he'll have to do it right as he strikes because he's about to pass out due to the recoil. He can't afford to miss. This is a high stakes situation, y'all. Shigaraki now back in the driver's seat saying that the attack just now felt weird. So he cut off his hand before it could hit me just to be safe. You know, he's planning something. He got that. He sees the look in Deku's eyes. He knows it's not the look of somebody who's about to give in up. He then states that Deku's insane because his body is overtaking with pain. It's hard to breathe. Anyone else will be focusing on saving their own life. He said anyone and they're who is sane, right? Start scratching. Notice Shigaraki's scratching again. I don't know y'all that that's indicative of something. But then he's like, nah. So be it. If, if that's how you want to play it, if you're dead set on going out like being the hero, ruining my fun, being a mid-pack, then I'll just smoke you, smoke this country, smoke everything for the low. They dash into each other, and then <laughs> you get the panel of Deku saying, transfer it, because remember he said, ah, and then he said, kill you. Crazy, Shigaraki's still in the op pack, but if you really think about it, he could have done it. I don't know, I don't know, I got some different opinions on it. Then we get smoke screen. He utilizes smoke screen. And he's like, oh, but my smoke screen's the least useful. Be even Shigaraki's like, look, it doesn't matter. If I activate decay, any plan you will be, any plan you have will be for not. You'll fail to protect everyone, but we get a shocker. Deku lifts up the chunk of ground that the decay is transferring on using Black Whip. That is, I mean, hold up. Is he using physical force? Is Black Whip using its own ability to push up? I mean, it looks like those Black Whips are actually at least enhanced because they're glowing with the, the color of all for one. Sorry, one for all. We then get the answer because Deku, uh, when he was sent back uh, after Shigaraki knocked him back with that huge blast, 
Shigaraki was wondering, when did he have time to set such a trap? And it turns out Deku set the black chains underground to tear out parts of the ground. He was just waiting to use it. Kind of like UA's anti-decay system to keep it in the air. So he thought about this. Then you have Shigaraki freaking out because there's something behind him that's making him freak out. He thinks Deku's going for an attack, but it's just the decay. Sorry, the cape which is immediately decayed, all right? It's the same decoy he used against Lady Nagant because Search's light showed that he was nowhere near that. Instead, it looked at his blood. It turns out that's what it was reacting to. Kind of in the same way that Shigaraki uh, got Deku to rely too much on his danger since he's taking advantage of all of his weaknesses. Deku tells him that he's too slow and that he knows that Search reacts to anyone the user lays their eyes upon. But once that he realized that he could do that. He decided to make it react to the user's quirks as well because his DNA is filled with the second user's vestige. He was then able to block his field of vision and create an opening which was able to land that attack using the fact that he is seeing him against him. This is some high IQ tech here, y'all. Really making them tear up because it's like, wow, you utilized my quirk so well. You really appreciated it. Like you, it's not just this weak, powerless quirk. It's, it's something that has value to it. Deku showed that all of them, all the quirks, it took every bit of his power to be able to pull this tech off. Every bit of it, every inch and mile that they're gaining is a result of a conglomeration of their hard work. Shigaraki is about to set himself in defense mode um, with his hands going over his body and throwing up those multiple gang signs. Um, and then he realizes my, my body is trying to reject. And Deku's charging up a fist from 2016 because he's like, I gotta hit this guy. Look at the muscle on that panel. Like, oh my goodness. His muscle physique is crazy. Deku is heartbroken and sad. He's like, don't worry about it. I've always just been a ghost. My consciousness is fading away. So before I get absorbed by Shigaraki, and then boom, Shigaraki's internal world. It looks like he gets hit by a meteor. Look at his chest caved in. He's being put in a pack. Now you've got the memories of the first time Shigaraki met Tomura and um, Dabi. Deku is seeing that within his brain. And then you have Shigaraki uh, seeing, I guess, Todoroki and, da and Deku's fight. Then you have Stain, sorry, not Stain, but then you have the lizard man, Gecko dude. <laughs> I don't remember his name. Uh, and he's having his first memory with Shigaraki. And it's like their memories are blending together. Then we get information like, hey, ninth, don't stop. The set, it's working, the second did it, but it's not going to be enough. You have to keep going, keep transferring the users. He's gonna bit by bit give it to him and probably end this with just All Might's quirk. Maybe that's how the story ends. You humanize Deku by lowering his overall power. He can now utilize 100% of all for one, sorry, one for all, but he can't utilize all the other quirks. I'd be okay with that because a Deku with 100% of one for all and all those other quirks and years and years and years to master them. Because keep in mind, for the most part, he's had what? Maybe a couple months with these quirks? Sometimes less for others. Uh, even if we highball it with a year, most people are born with their quirks. So he's already starting off with a deficit mastering one for all. Anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you love My Hero Academia, if you appreciate what we do here at the channel, please drop us a like. It means so much. It costs absolutely nothing. And remember, we also have memberships now. So if you wanna have some direct conversations, theories, videos done for you, let me know in the comment section, hit me up in those memberships, and I'll be glad to reach y'all out. Oh, and as always, whatever video YouTube says you should watch next, check it out, because I think you should watch it too.